Hamza is a municipal chief executive for Boko. He joins us on the line. Mr. Hamza, you're welcome to Eyewitness News. Yeah, thank you so much. We're hearing that fresh in your town. What seems to be the problem, sir? And if I'll, I'll be grateful if you can turn down the volume on your radio set. All right. Okay. Uh, three days ago, I think the, I was in the office uh, doing the, the normal day business for the municipal assembly and for the people of Boko. And on behalf of the president of the Republic of Ghana, I had a call from a lot of residents that Fulani man who um, was coming from the suburb of Boko, I think the, the border of uh, Ghana, Tugu, Widana, precisely. He, he went to buy a horse. And apparently when he was coming on his way to Boko, he didn't pass through the main road. He passed through various corners, which are, I mean, short routes that will lead you to Boko. And uh, he, uh, along the way, uh, some assailants have been gunned him down. Can you hear me? Yes, I've heard you. And yes. have we been told... So that, that, that triggered the current clashes between the Mampushis and the Kusas. How is the killing of a Fulani man triggering tension between a Kusasi man and a mm -hmm. Mampushi man? That I cannot ascertain and I cannot. It, it, it's interesting that you would find out that different tribes uh, which are not linked to the other two factions have been brought in to the conflict. And so because of this development, it sparked the conflict again. And so I cannot, I'm not a security man. It is difficult for me to get to know the intent of those who did it. it whether they believe that the full animal belongs to any other side or whatever, I don't know. I don't know why. And so that's exactly the story I was told and I was briefed by the securities. As the chairman of the Municipal Security Council, the securities briefed me upon calling them and listening to their side when they went to ascertain the facts. And so I drove there. By the time I got there, in fact, they had already picked the cops and then they were on their way coming. So I followed up to the police station, uh, to the hospital. And there the nurses over there picked the cops and they tried to find out the reasons behind it. All right. Is it the case that in the past there's been a history of either, uh, the other ethnic groups supporting either ethnic group, that is Kusasi or Mamprosi, and this Exactly. It has always been like that. There are other tribes that have sometimes, I wouldn't say whole, in a whole field, sometimes you will see one or two people who may have shown their allegiance to one of the feuding factions. But generally, the other tribes are not interested in this conflict. All the other tribes, in fact, they are not minor tribes, major tribes. Moshis are major tribes, the Busanges are major tribes. You can talk about other few minor tribes that are there, that I have not seen that they have taken side as far as this conflict is concerned. All and, right. uh, you, can, you can have a situation where he might be a Hausa man, or a Busanga man, or a Boshi man, or a, any other tribe that can show his or her loyalty to either Kusasis or Mampushis. That is a fact that we have established in Moku. It's a fact. And no one can run away from this fact. That's interesting. Now, Absolutely. the person who was shot, do we know mm. from which camp he was shot? I cannot tell you which camp the person belonged to. No, 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 not which camp he belongs to, but I'm saying that the, the ones who did the shooting, do we know which ethnic group they belong to? Because, and, and, and forgive me, the listeners, security, if we keep hammering on. Oh, 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 Mr. MC, if you just give me, I just want to kick, okay. kick, make a okay. quick announcement and apologize to our audience if we repeatedly mention ethnic groups, which would sound like okay. we are being ethnocentric, but Absolutely. the very crux of this conversation is on ethnicity, and that's why we are having Absolutely. to mention... Absolutely, and it is, yeah, it's not good for us to zero it down into ethnicity. Yeah, I'm just saying that, but we, have, we are helpless because that's actually the base for this conversation. It's a base, but then it is, remember that the crux of what we're talking about has been a chieftaincy dispute. 
Yes, a chief tanks and dispute that is far involved. older than you and I talking. It's older than me. No, no, it's older it's than older me. It's older than you yourself. No, it's older than me, but it's not older than you. <laughs> it's older than you know my age. No, no I don't this know. Started in 1957. <laughs> oh, okay, that's way back. So, that's way back. Way back in 19. Were you born at the time? No, no. <laughs> so let's put the matter to rest and deal with the substantive issues. So the substantive issues <laughs> are that people are shooting each other because they belong to one ethnic group or another and that is what is continuing tonight we are hearing yes. that there was some shooting again this morning one other Let person me established died established something before you proceed yes please most of the people who have been shot at are people who do not have any vested interest as far as this conflict is concerned i can establish to you the majority of them are completely innocent of the shootings they don't belong to any side. If by virtue of the fact that I am found to be moving and you suspect me it, and then you decide to do something to me, but that's it, that I can tell you from the findings, majority of them, they have never had taken side as far as this conflict is concerned. What happened today? And today, uh, but related to something that you want to do, what happened today yes. is a very vague question. Yes, because it, it, no. In the what last, happened I'm to giving you the trajectory. I'm giving you what happened three days ago. And it, so as a result of that, I want to establish that as a result of that, it triggered the recent clashes between the, fact, the two factions. And so the clashes have been going on for the last three days. 24 hours have been gunshots. Exchanges between the two factions. And you see the military, the police, and then the operation team of the, uh, the immigration coming in to help. Mediating between the two factions and fighting seriously to ensure that they foresaw peace within the municipality. And so if you ask me what happened today, it appears that <laughs> I probably know that something happened. And so it, it is something that we have to trace it. And so last night, right, Last night, there were some clashes. And it took us two out up to the dawn. Now, again, the clashes would again be inter-ethnic, correct? Absolutely. And it went all the way through to dawn? Yes. From three days ago, there has been that gunshot. So it's been, con it's been continuing till this morning? Continuous for the last three days after the killing of that Fulani man. I see. And that's all. Yes. Okay. This morning, we are told that a civilian was shot and killed. And we are told that this shooting happened because soldiers went on rampage. And we are told they even attacked animals. What is the official account you have from the I have soldiers? yet to get a briefing from my security apparatus. None of them have informed me about the killing of a civilian. What I do know is that this morning, that because we don't sleep. I hardly sleep at all. It's been so difficult for us. I got the briefings from the military commanders, the police, and then the rest of them. They have informed us that, look, they shot three of their men, three of their men. And that would definitely trigger some anger in them. And so they went out in their numbers. We tried as much as possible. We talked, we talked to them and we told them to temper justice with mercy. We asked them, I mean, as a politician, I am... Very sympathetic as far as my people are concerned. Mampushis or Kusasis are my people. I love all of them, and there is no way I can ever vent my anger on each. I have no power to direct any soldier, no policeman, to go and attack one feuding faction. That is not the way that Mr. President has asked me to go and sit and do. Mr. President asked me to go and work as a municipal chief executive to take care of the citizens of Boko, who are citizens of Boko. All the tribes in Boko are the citizens of Boko. And that's exactly the duty that I'm supposed to perform, to be impartial, to remain neutral as far as this conflict is concerned. Now, if even soldiers who are armed, whose job it is to protect lives and property in the area, are yes. being targeted, what happens to innocent civilians who are unarmed and who most likely, I've said, are not see, in interested in the conflict? Of, that aspect of that brutality is what I don't understand. Honestly speaking, I, from the day, from 24th of this, uh, November, when these uh, clashes began, I've always been on my, on, my, on my seat and ensuring that fundamental human rights of the citizenry of Boko are protected. I am moving my way 
I'm not part of the conflict. I am an armed person moving, a normal, normal civilian conducting my business. Then somebody can just come and attack you. So I, I in fact, I took it seriously with the military command, the BNI, the, all the security agencies have told them that it like that. We must ensure that civilians are protected. People who are not part of this conflict must be protected. They have a life to live. The constitution of the, the 1992 constitution of Ghana guarantees persons who have life. You must live. And if, if you are killed, just like that, it, it meant therefore we don't have a constitution and, and in that laws of Ghana are not working. You, you, you get what I'm trying to say? I do. We are exactly. told... So, we are so told the civilians mm -hmm. who are not part of this conflict, we must do everything possible to ensure that they are safe. We are told your town is fast the first town. Paint the picture for us. You are the man who uh, his job it is, according to the president, to ensure the, the, the town, the town Hopefully flourishes. It's a very lively town. It can be hot for one day, two days, three days. Life would be normal again in the next day. Don't worry about Boku. If it goes down, you will see the people again. Three, we are praying. Mm. Yes. Three days, is a lot of, three days is a lot of heat, sir. You see it? You say it can be hot one day, two day, or three days. I'm saying that's a lot of heat for a commercial. Uh, yes, absolutely, hub. but that's the, that's the nature of conflict. You know what's happening in Ukraine. You know the kind of uh, bombs that they are throwing there. People will run and they will come back again. It has happened in Israel. It has happened in Palestine, Israel war, the Serbian war. I mean, almost all the wars and conflicts that we have had in this world. People will run and they will come back again. No Boko is not an exception at all. But the uncertainty is the problem, isn't it? Uh, are Absolutely. school children able to go to school? That is a real worrying situation. Look, the economy of Boko is crashing down, zero crashing down. Education is completely, completely destroying, destroying. Over 100 teachers, I got a briefing from the GS director. Over 100 teachers have left. Nurses have fled. Almost everybody is running away. That that is what we are looking for to see if we can work out things that will let the people come back. But then, like I said, life in Boko is normal as we are living in there. So morning you see the people running and coming back to stay. But this is the situation in which we are. And I'm using this medium to appeal to the president and to tell the vice president and tell the national security that the matter is becoming so serious that we need central government intervention. There's a need for them to take a central look at the entire system of the security situation must be improved. Yes. When you need central government support, would that include what armed persons to be deployed? No, of course, if they deploy them, we don't have a problem. It will be fine. Do you not already have, have a standby force? Do you, do you we, have, we have, we have, we uh, have a mini barracks at Bazua and other places around. But but that's not necessarily enough. We, of course, of course, yes. Now, the, the, the picture painted that hundreds of teachers have left, nurses are fl fleeing the community. That's a, they, that's uh, a crisis let, situation we are, we are looking it's at. It's a crisis situation. It is a crisis situation. Some are virtually, for example, if I'm in the township, if I'm in Natinga, where it's predominantly Mampushi areas, and I'm teaching around, let's say, Talwega or Bazua, uh, Buabula, which is also a Kusasi dominated area. My life is in danger. I'm not supposed to go there because when I go there, they kill me. And again, the, the reverse is that if I'm in Buabula and I'm teaching in, say, Winamzoa School, which is located in the Mampushi areas, I cannot go there and teach. So you should know that I cannot go there. Once I go there, they kill me. So the people who fold their arms, when you call them, oh, I've gone to Bulga, I'm sick, I've gone here, nurses have fled. I mean, they are there, but we would term it as they flee because we can find them. <laughs> this, you, you understand. This, Nobody wants to refuse her, her life. This conflict is older than you, but it's your job to fix it. What, in your it's own estimation, what's your in your own estimation and in your own wisdom can be the solution? Look, the first of all, I would think I would have to um, thank His Excellency, the Chief of Staff, and then the Vice President, because they've intervened from November till date, and they've done the same throughout the years. Previous government have done similar things, but I must commend the president, I must commend the chief of staff and the vice president. I came to them and I told them the situation the last time. They intervened by giving us more ammo cars, more armed men were brought. Nonetheless, the situation persisted. Um, 
in, in thanking them, I must thank the security agencies that have been working seriously in Boku, i.e. the soldiers, the fire service, the immigration tax force, the police service, all the securities in my municipality. They've done wonderfully well. Without them, it would have been a worst scenario. The worst case scenario would have been that would take a lot of cops day in, day out. Now, the only thing I would want to do is that we let the people of Boku and the people of Ghana commit us in their prayers. We need nothing but prayers. Allah, God, should answer our prayers. He's the only one that can get this solution for us as we talk today. It is beyond human intervention. It's beyond human intervention. Wow. What about the weapons in your town? How can they be removed? You know which weapons? The civilian weapons or the ones who were used by the military and the police? No, the, the weapons with the civilians who are shooting each other. <laughs> uh, let me tell you this. Since 1957, when the first incident occurred, history has it that they have searched through hours. They've conducted studies in each room in each house. You would get nothing from these two factions. Throughout till 2000, 2001, 2008, till date, as I'm talking to you last night, there were searches. Today, this afternoon, they've searched. They don't have any designated point of searching. They can go to Mampushi area and search. They can go to Kusaki areas and search. So as for the issue of searching to disarm the people from using these guns, you will do it. 1,000 guns, you get one. If Kusasis have 1,000 guns and Mampushis have 1,000 guns, when you search, you just get one gun and receive them from the civilians. The rest of them, they know where they hide them. <laughs> Maybe Umar Sanda, you may have some, uh, you may have some suggestions or some solutions. You are a Ghanaian yourself, and I know you love the people of Baku, so you prefer to give suggestions as to how you think that the military, the police, and the security should do to get these arms from them, because we all want the betterment or and the future of Baku. And so, when things like that happen, we would prefer that experts should come and then help us to ensure that we get these things taken away from the civilians. I'm sure we would speak of, and I would give you my own advice, in hope that that, that that would work. Um, yes, but it's, yes. it really is a painful picture that uh, you're sharing with us. It's there. very daring. It's very, very scary. Very, very scary. I must be honest with you. The situation in Boku is very scary. Mr. MC, you the sound... The display of you, ammunition, the display of guns is becoming so serious. You sound the like you are in Boku despair. You say? You sound like you're in despair. That's exactly what I'm supposed to do. I am in the shoes of the citizens of Boku. The Bistas, the Kantotis, the Dagombes, the Houses, the Yorubes, the Moshis, the Mampushis, the Kusasis. I am sitting here and wearing the shoes that they are wearing. Majority of the Kusasis, majority of Mampushis do not like this conflict. They don't like it. Are you safe yourself? You say? Are you safe? I am counting on God to help me. I'm not 100% safe. But are you wearing bulletproof though while you wait for God as I don't well? have one. Probably you can buy one for me to help myself. Do you have protection, police or military protection? I have a military protection, but that, that is not 100%. We wish you all the best, sir, and thank you for speaking to us. Thank you so much. That was the municipal chief executive for Boko, and um, listen to him there. That's a painful one. He's the MCE, head of security in the... Boko municipality. Amadou Hamza is his name. This is Eyewitness News on 97.3 CTF. My name is Umaru Sandamod here with Nashika Caesar. When we come back, two persons have died in renewed chieftaincy clashes in Jantong.